Hey, this is Samantha Clark and Olivia McCraney, and this is our presentation on congruent communications, the theory by Haim Janot. The goals of our presentation are that the student will learn about Janot's theory and how to implement the theory into the classroom through a PowerPoint presentation, and our second goal is that the students will identify the correct and incorrect implementation of the theory through an activity, which will be a worksheet later on. Our classroom climate is respectful, open, non-judging, and caring. The rules should be strict and the students should know the consequences for each rule that is broken. Procedures are to guide students to acceptable behavior rather than criticize and to always keep negative feelings at bay. When disciplining, the teacher should provide students with a saving face exit and there should be planning instruction. Saving face meaning that the student does not leave embarrassed. And this is the characteristics of Janot's theory and this is a medium control theory. So. Through this, you can see that there are good characteristics of the classroom and the characteristics are keeping the student in mind. It's not just the teacher thinking about, oh, how can I handle my classroom? It's they're doing it to help the student interaction go well with the teacher as well. And this helps keep down conflict in their classroom. The overview of Janot's theory is that Janot's theory of congruent communication seeks to eliminate barriers to communication and learning in the classroom. The congruent communication has three key focuses that help a classroom. The behavior and language of the instructor sets the tone for learning in the classroom. The first key factor is that there must be a harmonious communication that set brief yet clear expectations for the behavior. For an example, a student is out of their seats. The teacher, one says, Jared, you're disturbing the class. But teacher two says, Jared, your behavior is disturbing the class. Each teacher is not wrong, but the way that they approach the situation makes it a better expectations for the student. Student or teacher two was right. Teacher one was wrong because teacher one was focusing on the student, where teacher two focused on the behavior that the student did. Key two, it demonstrates behavior that invite and encourage cooperation in the classroom. Janot focuses on, does not focus on you statements because that places a focus on the child rather than the behavior. It focuses on I statements that keep the focus on the statement on the teacher or speaker rather than the student. We have a video to explain this a little further. Oh, you, know, you know when you're accusing, you know when you're accusing, when the word that comes out of your mouth is what? You. You always. You never. You this. You that. You. 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 That, that's what we say all the time. And sometimes you're trying to express, right, the words, right? You're trying to express yourself. But what if instead of doing you, and I, some of you know the you statement versus the I statement thingy, Right? What if, instead of saying you, what if you said I? What if you really, because when you're accusing, basically they're doing something or something is going on that you just don't approve of or you have an issue with, and it's doing something in you that's causing you to get riled up in yourself. Remember we talked about the whole blame, you know, insult thing? And so now you want to, you, you want to bring out something. But what if you were conscious of the fact that you're hurting, and you know what? I have an issue, or I am wrestling with this thing that you're doing. So now it's not, I'm tearing you down. Now it's saying that you're hurting me by this action, right? This action is affecting me, but we need to get through this together. Totally different dynamic, but you're saying the same thing. Totally different. I'm sorry. No, one of the things that I've learned in expressing myself that way is that when you share on your behalf, they can't take that away from you. You own that. That's how you feel. And so he can't tell you, oh, you can't feel like that. You know what I mean? And you own that. You're sharing what's coming out of your heart. The third key is discipline rather than punish students in the classroom. Punishment is very inflicting. It causes harm, and no one wants to be punished while in front of their peers. Discipline, however, teaches. It redirects the student to what they need to be focused on. Haim Janat said this quote, Misbehavior and punishment are not opposites that cancel each other. 
One, on the contrary, they breed and reinforce each other. We have three different scenarios of implementing this theory in the middle school classroom. Our first scenario is that the teacher gets frustrated with the student for not having supplies for class. Instead of saying to the student, why don't you have your supplies? You need to be more responsible. The teacher should say, I've noticed that you haven't had your supplies for class. Is there anything I can do to help you be prepared for class? This doesn't make the student out to be the bad guy or whatever. It makes the student feel like that their teacher cares and it's not, it makes the teacher not have an attacking mentality. mentality. It makes the teacher more like, okay, I'm here for my student, I'm here to help my student and whatever it takes for my student. And that makes the student care more. Our second scenario is student walks in the class looking upset about something, but doesn't say anything and is silent the whole class period. The teacher pulls the student aside after class, reminds the student of her planning period, and lets the student know that she is there if the student needs anything or needs to talk. This helps the student know that the teacher is not invading their privacy and that the teacher respects the student, but that the teacher wants to be there to help the student. And so it helps the student know that they have an advocate for them and lets them know that the teacher is there for them if they need them. And this helps that bond between the teacher and student form, but at the same time keeps it where it's a respectful thing and this, they're not invading each other's privacy. Our third um, implementation is that a student feels that another student has treated him unjustly. The two students become angry with each other and the situation begins to escalate. The teacher asks them to stay after class to sort the situation out. When the teacher asks the students to explain why they are angry, they begin to blame each other for the cause of their anger. The teacher stops the students and encourages them to use I statements to explain how they feel. The students use this technique to talk through their anger and their conflict is resolved. A lot of the times in conflict, you it's difficult for a person to resolve a conflict if all they're focusing on is what the other person did. And this makes it hard for the conflict to be resolved. If the student is using I statements, it helps them know what they're feeling and makes it clearer to the other person they're communicating with. And it helps the conflict become resolved easier. Then each student is taking responsibility for their own actions. And then it helps them see, okay, where can we go to implement a solution to fix this conflict? And it resolves the conflict quick, faster. One benefit we have for this theory is that this theory encourages students in their self-confidence. When they know their teacher cares and that their voice are heard, it encourages them to speak up and is not worried about saying the wrong thing in class. Another benefit is the relationship between the teacher and the student is stronger. The student feels like the teacher genuinely cares and is there for the student. This, in turn, makes the student enjoy school more and want to excel. Critiques of the theory, limitations, and management. Um, there have been critics give statements regarding this theory as to whether it works or not. One that we found said, Janot did not try his theory in a classroom himself, so how do we know that the theory is as effective as he said it would be? He did not actually prove his own theory. How can he tell teachers what to do if he never actually did it himself? And this is actually proved wrong. Um, this argument is proved invalid because teachers have tried this theory and it is effective so they have given an argument that is not accurate. And just because he didn't do it in his classroom himself doesn't mean that he did something wrong. The fact that the other teachers have done it and it has proven it to be a successful theory does not mean that since he didn't do it himself doesn't mean that it was a wrong. Because he did study children and he did educational psychology so he knows what he's talking about he just never implemented it in the classroom so the fact that he did the theory is good in itself but then now there's actually proof that it does work so this argument is proved wrong the second theory is that this theory requires communication different students have different communication styles the theory may make it difficult for students to understand what the teacher wants from him or her what the teacher wants her to do. 
this comes into a factor because a lot of students are in classrooms where they are being told what to do and how to do it and they are really not being heard by the teacher. Since there is a com communication between both teacher and student, helps out the student more than the teacher sometimes. And the reason that this is an argument is because you have people from different learning styles and communication styles coming together. For instance, um, a teacher could tell a student one instruction and it can, in Georgia, it could mean one thing, whereas somebody from Mississippi may completely interpret it a different way because of the different communication styles some words may or may not be said. Like, let's get started could mean, okay, let's get our books out and let's open it and start an assignment here, whereas somewhere else it might be, um, okay, so let's just keep talking and then whenever the teacher starts, that's when we get started. So it's just different communications. The reflection that we have reflect back on the PowerPoint and it said, would you use this theory in your classroom? I would definitely use this theory in my classroom because it allows a sense of respect between student and teacher. And I really like how he didn't punish the students, he disciplined them because that teaches them what not to do, but not in a harsh way. I agree. I think that this theory is excellent for a classroom and it increases your um, rapport between the teacher and the students. And our next question is, if we would implement it, how would we implement the theory? And I think it's just basically you're going in, you're setting your expectations for your students, you let that communication be there between you and your students and let them know that you're there to listen, you're there and you respect their opinions and their voice and they're heard. And then your students feel more comfortable in your classroom and you have that communication and your students want to be there. They don't feel like they're just here for class. We're actually here because it's important we are here and we belong and we want to be here. Our next question is if you didn't implement it, what would be the reason for not implementing this theory? I would definitely say that this theory is definitely a theory to try out in your classroom. And, I mean, if it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't, it could not just work for the students that you had this year. I would definitely try, try again, because you're going to have different students and different techniques and different learning styles every year. And these are our references listed. We had a website and two books. And if you are more interested in researching this theory, you should look it up and see what you think on congruent communication. Thanks. This concludes our presentation.